a very interesting speaker with, who comes with a lot of experience. So she has around two decades of experience in the IT industry and she's working at Red Hat as a project manager. She's been managing projects with a strong record of driving results through focus on customer satisfaction, team, organization goals, and business priorities. She's a certif certified project management professional, which is PMP. And she's also a certified scrum master, product owner, and a child expert. She's proven leader with strong technical organization and problem solving skills. Yeah, sounds interesting. You know what is she going to talk about today? Well, the presentation is going to touch upon a transition from traditional project management to agile and it's a new concept that's going to be introduced and which is recently introduced in the IT industry. So she's going to be talking about that. Please welcome Lata Murthy. All. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How to know yourself and better yourself. Yeah. Well, He's recording, I'm not, I'm not sure if the uh, audio would be recorded. How have you managed the 500,000 transition to 2000 and the change for 2000? One, so then we are all project managers. <laughs> <laughs> They're already a project managers. Alright, um, so before I even get into the project management, let us understand how it got evolved. You know, it's not a new thing which is like, uh, you know, which is like off net which is like uh, gaining a lot of importance, but yes. Uh, it started in BC, that is 2570 BC, where they, you know, where they constructed the Pyramid of Giza, and then Great Wall of China in 208 BC. And then uh, some of you might, you know, in a sense, uh, if you have heard about some of the topics, or if you have gone through some of the MBAs over here, or you know, anybody who has gone through the project management concepts as such, you would have heard about or would have read about the Gantt chart, and Perth, and all of that. So it's nothing new, but just, I mean, if you could see the history here, it's 1917, Gantt chart was introduced, and 1957, the critical path was introduced, and Perth is followed by WS, which I think yesterday, if somebody would have attended by uh, pre con session, we talked about the WBS. So, I mean, all of that has been introduced, and we had the body. You know, now it's been like everybody looks up, look upon the PMI, that is Project Management Institute, which certifies people on the project management, that's PMI, is, you know, PMP, and ACP for the agile. So, it got introduced in 1969. So, you could see the journey there. A little bit about you know where we stand in terms of project management. So for today, the agenda would be the traditional, uh, rather I would say I'll pick up the waterfall model versus agile, probably Scrum, which is gaining a lot of importance these days, and you know DevOps, and there is somebody called as Mr. X. We'll look into that. Yeah. Traditional. How many of you still work on waterfall model? Anybody? Yes? Thank you. Wonderful. Okay, so what happens in traditional waterfall model is we have the requirements analysis completely done and then we move the next phase of design and then we move the next phase of content development or coding and then we get the QA comes to the picture and then they review it. Probably in your case, the tech talk, we get the reviews done by the SMEs and then we deliver the documents and then the maintenance phase. So that happens in a sequential way, isn't it? It doesn't happen in a parallel way. Is it good or bad? We'll answer that later. Okay. So this is in terms of waterfall, like how it flows from top-bottom approach. Meaning you, you complete the, you know, the entire phase of design and then you move the coding, and then you move the review, and then the delivery of the product. So it's a sequential uh, thing which happens. Let's look at Agile now. So Agile, I have picked up Scrum as one of the base uh, thing here. So how many of you work on Agile? 
Wow, that's a good number. So which flavor of ajai? There are many flavors, see. And people always, you know, tell me that scrum is ajai. No, scrum is one of ajai. Yes or no, guys? Yeah. And scrum. So that's a combo. No, no, no. In different areas. Oh, okay. Okay, nice. How about you? Scrum. Scrum. How many scrum here? Wow, nice. Okay. And how many other other than scrum? It could be XP, XP. How about you, which? Okay, great. All right. So agile is a you know it has different flavors of methodologies where you can customize those you know which which helps you to handle uh, the you know the dynamic changes which is happening from the customers you know probably it's because of the market because of the conditions that we are we live in so to to handle the dynamic changes which happens you know to handle it agile plays a very very important role so let's look at. Um, the agile um, as such in a very detailed way. <coughs> so here what happens is there are, you know, I have taken up a main, uh, you know, main entities of agile or rather scrum I would say because scrum is the most popularly known development methodology when it comes to software development cycle. So you know, I have picked up scrum. So we have product backlog Sprint backlog, Scrum, Sprint, working product. I don't understand any of this. <laughs> right? For some of them, which is like very, very new to it. So, have you heard of Epic's user stories task? Everybody or somebody is like clueless about it. Clueless, thank you. Okay, this is exactly what I wanted. <laughs> so, um, okay, we can give a comparison of when we talk about Epic's, it's like a chapter. And user story is like you are heading one. And the task would be something like your the subtopics under your heading. So just to give you a very vague example there, you know, nowhere related to, but again, um, you know, just just to give you a, how it works. So Epic is one of the biggest requirements, and uh, the product backlog will have all the list of requirements which gets in. You know, it could be in the form of Epics, user stories, or tasks. When it is in an Epic format, then that gets divided or you know, it gets decomposed to further user stories and tasks for the better, uh, you know, working. In the sense, we need to get a complete clarity there. So there are three main roles when we are talking about Scrum or Agile as such. You know, when we talk about roughly, there are product owner, Scrum master, and the team member. So everybody who works in the project are called as team members. There's no designation per se, like a designer or a developer or a QA or a doctor. No, they all belong to one team, and that's Scrum team. You know, and then Scrum master is the one who facilitates the team members to work efficiently on all of these. You know, for the product, um, you know, you know, just to handle the task, any impediments, they're okay to remove it. Okay, and product owner is a voice of customer, where he has a liaison between the customer and the team. So he sets the priority on what is required for each spread. What do you mean by spread here? Anybody? Working cycle. Working cycle? Yeah. So um, what happens in uh, you know in the traditional when we are looking at we finish the entire phase of development, QA and you know and the, uh, you know, the delivery of it. But here what happens is we have it in cycles. Manu, the, the team members has the luxury to pick up the tasks which are on high priority and then they start working on them. Okay? And depending on the nature of the project or nature of uh, um, you know, the company or the client requirement, they can set the sprint duration to two weeks to six weeks. In some of the companies have seen it as like one week time period also. You know, they have like one week sprint. So uh, somebody came to me and said, can you make it as one day? So in that case, why don't we go for the extreme programming? You know, where they have every day cycle. Yeah, tell me. Uh, you work on uh, XP, is it? No. It's safe. Is that safe what you're working on? OK. All right. So um, extreme programming is another um, you know, uh, flavor of Agile, which, and, you know, which allows the, um, you know, the 
members to work on a daily bills. Okay, daily delivery for that matter. Okay. So when we are looking at the sprint uh, at this point of time, it's a two week, four week or six week sprint which happens. So team members can go ahead and pick up a task which is feasible for them to work independently in the two week duration. Okay. You might come back and say that, hey, I don't know, you know, we need to do some survey before even we get into it. Have them as a zero sprint. Block one week of time and then, you know, collect all your requirements and then start working on it. So that makes a lot of sense, isn't it? So uh, the search sprint backlog will have the list of tasks that you would want to achieve in that two week or four week or six week period of time phase. So and then the sprint cycle happens, you start working on it. And you have the everyday meeting, so it's also called as daily startup meetings, where you will answer like three questions. The entire team comes to the, you know, it's like a startup meeting where the entire team is present there and you answer three main questions there. What I have done yesterday? What is my plan today? And what are the impediments or roadblocks that I see to complete the task, what has been assigned to me today? So just these three questions, the entire team is supposed to be answering that. So once that cycle has been done, so towards the end of the sprint, they have something which is working product, or something which goes in as an input for the next sprint, or something which is which could be shippable to the customer. All right? So that's the working product what we are talking about. So how does the entire thing help? Because towards the end of every sprint, kick off meeting happens for uh, the yeah. You are right. <laughs> it happens before you even uh, go ahead with the sprint backlog. You, I mean, it's one of the meetings which happens. Uh, there are like multiple meetings which happens, isn't it? Uh, when, when you talk about sprint, so that happens before you come up with the sprint backlog, or before you comment on or comment on sprint backlog. So that happens. Um, you know, probably it's usually like uh, you know, it's time boxing in for a half a day or two hours. I mean, depending on the nature of uh, the sprint that you're working on. Yeah. Any other question? Did it answer your question? Oh, all right. Okay. Sure. Yes, please. In each sprint, do you need to showcase any demo or prototype? Absolutely. Towards the end of sprint, you have to demo it to your customer or rather to your product owner and get an okay on that. Yeah, for example, what's the scope for documentation aspect? Development side, you might have created some code, execute, and deploy it. But for the entire documentation cycle, do you have a scope to showcase the demo or prototype at that point? See, say for example, in your uh, sprint backlog, you have come in, you know, you have committed saying that these are the things that I work on, and there is also something called as acceptance. Um, you know, how uh, from the product owner, there is something called as acceptance criteria. Say, stating that how. What, what what makes me to accept this particular task. So if that is meeting and if you, you know, during the demo, you go back to the product owner and then demo it saying that these are the acceptance criteria you set for this particular task or the user story and then this is what has been achieved. So if it matches, then yes, you know, uh, the product owner will accept. Otherwise, you might have to revisit all the particular user story. Any other questions? So this is uh, in waterfall model. If the duration of the project is one year, then probably two months, the initial two months is just spent on planning the work. Okay, and then agile. It's yes, the initial planning is definitely happening, but again, we have the intermediate cycles, which happens. That's very short term. All right. So, and business with the customer and developer since the working product is available only towards end of the cycle in waterfall. Say, after one year, I'll be able to see the product. But whereas in Agile, by end of every sprint, you'll be able to see something that you can go back to the customer and they say that this is what I could showcase you. Okay? And time between specification and implementation, this is again what was committed. That's a long term in terms of uh, uh, no waterfall. And Agile is a little short, very short, I would say. And this is the work, right? At the end of the sprint, so Mm -hmm. So if they find anything, any problem in that, so they roll back? Yes, they roll back. They have to. They have to roll back. They have to. See, there are multiple things over here. One, um, they, they 
plan it in such a way that they have the complete clarity before even they start developing it. Like how they do it in a time. And they test it completely. And then the deployment happens. So it would come as a bulk back uh, you know, to the team. And that would be considered depending on the priority. Say if it is not a priority one, they might consider in the next sprint cycle. Okay, but it comes like, like a pilot deployment or something? No, no, it's, it's a, a complete, complete yes. It's oh, complete then it will be a huge Herculean task if it's a, a some uh, it's a maintenance patches, right? Maintenance patches, patches are something. No, it is in product development in all the cases where they have this daily, say Microsoft, I think. Anybody from Microsoft here? Or from Relevance Lab? There is something called the Relevance Lab where they do it like every week towards the end of Friday, they have this deployment. You know, which happens. So, but the deployment happens in a daily cycle, and towards end of uh, you know on Friday they have this consolidated build, and then they push it to the task force. So that's yes, it is from SCCM, is it? Sorry, is it from the SCCM or uh, the centralized software distribution? Uh, yes. Yes. Oh, this then yes. the operations team will have a huge task. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But again, depending on the the nature of the project okay. that you are cooking. Right? Yeah. Yes. So, so does so does tech writing, not this, not this. <laughs> so, so, yes. Yeah. And generally, the the way uh, agile works is like you know sometimes though they do plan like you know okay maybe we'll release something in two months, uh, but every sprint cycle you know when they end, it should be ready for deployment. Yeah. Right. So that is the way they. That's the right. model of. Absolutely. Thinking. It could be either ready for the deployment or it could act as an input for the next sprint. Well, it could be anything there. But again, there should be something suitable towards the end of the sprint. Yes. You know, they have the sprint goals, you know, uh, you know for every sprint. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. So I have a question related to uh, deployment in uh, DevOps. Mm -hmm. uh, probably what I have seen so far with the enterprise software is uh, deployment is uh, very time sensitive in the sense that they time the market and also the downtime and all that. I can understand uh, auto upgrades for, uh, where it is uh, automatically upgraded and all that. Mm -hmm. But for enterprise software, uh, have you seen instances of using this particular uh, model of DevOps? This, uh, to what I know, the knowledge that I have is um, usually what I'm saying is from the, uh, something like medical equipment where they have this upgrades happening. Um, you know, every uh, for every development that happens, which comes in as a bug, which needs the highest criticality to be addressed, so it goes in as a um, you know the DevOps model works best. Any other questions? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. That is one of the uh, uh, I would say one of the principles of Agile, which recommends. The entire team to be co-located, and rather, um, you know, in some of the companies, they just work in one room. You know, the entire team works in one room, and they have the highest communication level there. Yes. Yes, please. Are there instances where waterfall model is more apt than uh, agile? Sorry, I didn't get you. Are there instances where waterfall model works better than agile? Multiple instances. Like probably, I would say the metro. You know, which you could see now. How many of you have a bag? Okay, probably some of these road constructions and things like that, where you have to complete your plan, you have to complete your design, and then you have to lay the roads completely, and then the testing happens, right? So, you know, it is up there. Because it's, it's long term. It's a long term, yeah, it's a long term. It's mostly government projects. No, even in some of the software uh, projects, I was working for Alpha Lucent earlier, and um, you know, again there are multiple variations in when we talk about waterfall. It could be what you know when we talk about traditional, it could be train model, it could be V V model, you know, it could be spiral. I mean, all of that to an extent it comes under this category. I have, I mean, I, mean, uh, I, mean, I, uh, I can tell this with my own experience. I worked with things for power plant automation software. Mm -hmm. So for that, uh, the Agile was not preferred. So we worked on B model there, and which was right. more preferred there because the cycle was longer and the product was huge. Yeah. And you know what? It is just what I'm seeing is it's a cluster of multiple uh, methodologies, and they say that this is what we follow. <laughs> That's fair enough. You know, if it's working for your project, fair enough. Nobody will question. But only thing is, have it consistent across your project at least. Yeah. Yes. 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 Yes
I guess it also depends on how modular your product is. Absolutely, yeah, right. right. So, okay, that <laughs> almost through. <laughs> okay, now we we'll look at traditional uncertainty, complexity, and liquidity. When you have all of these four scenarios, that's when you have this model working. So, any idea where it could be? Where is this coming from? So, what if I uncertain, complex? Ambiguity, oh my god. Do we really live in the world? Yes or no? Yes, we do. Yes. Because, see, this was introduced uh, by American Army and which is religiously followed in our Indian Army. <laughs> <laughs> the normal project man, you know, in the sense, yeah, um, in the normal scenario. but. It's highly, UCA is one concept which is used by the Indian Army at this point of time and I haven't seen any of the uh, software development people or per se the software, hardware, manufacturing using this UCA concept at this point of time. So my question is, according to you, which is the best project or management model? It would be a cusp, <coughs> as you said. Okay. <laughs> which? Which works for the company or the modular, yeah. whichever it Absolutely. is. Absolutely. You know what? It depends. I don't care any model, but it should serve my purpose. What company recommends, what my product, product is all about, how my customer wanted, how dynamic is the project. All of it is different from that. So some of them, you know, when, when I say I train people on Agile, they said, wow, I said, what is a wow factor there? That's another methodology that you're learning, isn't it? Yes or no? Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm through with my many questions. Yeah. Um, the last slide, Muka, why did we see this? I read the, I mean, I didn't get <laughs> You didn't see what? I mean, uh, it's a new concept introduced. Yes. We need to go, go back to the Indian Army to get more details there. Because I don't have. <laughs> yeah, but this is, uh, see, I'm part of PMI, uh, Project Management Institute. I'm a member there. And this concept was introduced in our last uh, conference. I thought bringing it back to you guys. Mm -hmm. So there is no answer yet for this? No, then actually we don't know how actually they work. You know, there are some uh, YouTube uh, videos. Um, leading Uka world, something like that, mm -hmm. which you can check, it's from Ra Ramakans or somebody, mm -hmm. they're from the Indian Army. So he has explained it really well. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, yes? Can it be used in software? Sorry? Uka. Uh -huh. Can it be used in software? Exactly, there are some of the examples where I quoted there where we could see uh, traces of Uka, where we could introduce Uka into. Any other questions? The, the slides will be available for you guys. Uh, you know, it's in the, I think it's there in the pen drive. So please let reach me out anytime. So, All right. Uh, thank you very much, Lata. Yeah, we're supposed to applaud you. Know? Okay. Right. So I would like to just conclude uh, the entire thing what she said. So I mean, imagine the transition that we've had over the years, like. You know, um, we have uh, gone from traditional to agile, DevOps, and then something called as VUCA. Like, it sounds so amazing, like VUCA. It's like a bomb, you know, like from the Indian Army. Like, oh, you know what? I don't like you, so I'm just going to throw a VUCA away, like a bazooka. You know, like the rhyming words. Yeah? It sounds fun, right? So maybe in the next STC, I'm sure it is. Lata will be able to cover more details about Luka. She, she's going to approach the Indian Army and get all the details. Maybe even join the Army? I don't know. <laughs> yeah? Alright, thank you so much, Lata.